We seem to have the Sheffield jinx. We've only lost two games so far this season. And we've lost them both to Sheffield Wednesday and Sheffield United. But today brings a new challenge. We have two games at Fratton Park against Walter McSorry's to Crystal Palace. Who are doing decently considering they've been newly relegated. But not too well. So hopefully we can optimise them. And then against High Flyers, Ipswich Town after an international break. They're in second. Can we be in second by the end of the episode? Roll the intro. Goes Pompey, 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 you're the team. Pompey, 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 Pompey you're the green. Pompey, you're the greatest, and we'll keep following you. Yeah, we'll keep following Pompey, following the ball in blue. Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 3 of season 2 of the Portsmouth Southern Foot Manager 2018. Today it's time for two championship games. I was going to say Premier League games. Two championship games. Not quite the Premier League just yet. Calm down. We're a little bit ahead of ourselves. A few things to tell you before we carry on. We have signed David Myler as predicted in the last episode. We signed him on deadline day. Um, really good. Valued at 3 million and he was a free transfer. So, you know, can't complain at that. And the best central midfielder at the club. Um, I don't know if I said we signed Marcus Brown on loan from West Ham once again. I'm not quite sure. Um, a few players went out on loan. Ollie, Ollie Hawkins, I said in the last episode. Um, Dion Donoghue, we decided to put out on loan at Exeter. Um, that's purely because, I won't actually say now, um, but I think it's the third best left back at the club, so I kind of gambled. Then a few of our youngsters, the likes of Widgington and a few other players, have gone out on loan. But apart from that, nothing to report. So we only had the one game since the last episode in which we lost 1-0 to Sheffield Wednesday. Now, it's a bit of a boring game. Nothing really happened. Chris Long played well. He missed a sitter, to be honest, as well as Matt Clark playing really well as well. So he didn't play badly. It was just a bit of a boring game. With Sheffield Wednesday getting the deciding goal. Um, but, you know, we've got a game against Pally Sun Ipswich at home now. We haven't lost at home yet. We've won all our games at home. So probably today is going to be the one where um, that happens. We're down to 11th in the championship. Obviously very um, sort of top and change at the moment. But we've already had our first sack in the season. Michael Laudrup's already been sacked from the Villa. Um, Colin Calderwood is uh, the... Oh, why is it not saying that? Um, Villa, they have sacked him. I'm honest. I'm being honest here. Um, there we go. Laudrup sacked. So it just proves how quickly um, a team can turn against you. Let's get straight into the Palace game. Though. We've got Luke McGee in goal. We've Thompson, Ebanks, Landell, Clark and McCory at the back. Uh, Milo makes his debut today after he's built up his fitness a little bit and then Brown joins him in the central midfield. And then it's Lowe and Naismith on the wings today with Armstrong and McIlinden, of course. Was that good last episode? They had the episode names after him. You've got to be fairly good to have the episode name after you. So, Macklin's and Armstrong start with Chaplin and Long, their replacements potentially on the bench. Brett Pittman sort of coming back from his injury. Um, and Donald Love and Adekanya don't get starts today because they've got high injury risks. Um, and then Christian Burge is also coming back from an injury layoff. So, let's play our game against Palace. It's going to be a really tricky one. But on camera, yeah, we haven't lost the game. I feel that's probably going to change if we play Manchester City in the Carabao Cup. But that's going to happen at some point, isn't it? Because if we, win or if we don't lose any of our games this season, we're going to do pretty well. And that would be nice, but I just doubt it will happen. Now, I'll just look at the Pal Palace lineup out at the corner of my eye. They've got Ben Teke and James Wilson up front. That's quite a dangerous pair up front. I'm quite frightened about that. But at home, as I say, we haven't lost yet. So hopefully our home advantage gives a little bit. And perhaps it might be the home advantage works. Because if you can, if that makes sense, we've lost. We, are, we, haven't, won, we haven't won a game away from home. Therefore, their home advantage would make sense. But anyway, McAlinden scores. We're seven minutes in. We're already ahead. McAlinden, again, he didn't start in the last game against Sheffield Wednesday. And I don't think he took any part in that game. But he's putting himself in a serious contention for an international call at the moment. I know it sounds stupid. Um, he plays for one of the Irish teams. I don't know which one it is. Um, I don't want to sound like a complete plonker. Um, he is Irish, and he plays for just, well, just Ireland. Um, so, is that who's actually on the national team side? Shane Long, Scott Hogan. Players that aren't fantastic. So, to be honest, I think McAlinden could get a shout for being uh, in that squad. Because obviously he's the international right next up. And it'd be brilliant to see him called up. We're having a really good start here. Clark again to low. Low on the edge of the box. Put it in again. Pope gets through. That's Nick Pope who played for Burnley in the Premier League this season. Because Tom Heaton's been injured. I think it's this season. Anyway, I'm not going mad. Yeah, I think it is this season. Um, Heaton hopefully back soon. He's a really good goalkeeper. And hopefully we can take it to the World Cup in real life. But anyway, lovely interplay. Low on the edge of the box again. Put it in. Doesn't quite meet to target. But Matty James, poor pass from him. Low, back to Thompson, lovely interplay here, Brown, Myler, oh he loses the ball, that's a real good first impression, isn't it, blimey, da uh, David Benteke, I don't think so, ja uh, James Wilson shoots, oh my god, that was close, I can't remember what I was going to say, I really can't remember what I was going to say, no, it it's lost me, I was, I was going to say something then, and it completely went out of my mind, well let's continue then on another subject, shall we, um, we've had most possession, but it looks like Ipswich 
aren't playing too well today, unless it's just because other teams are playing better, perhaps. But we're doing really well. We're winning against Crystal Palace 1-0. We've, we've some solid players at Palace. You know, that's really good. And the Bags Landel nearly scores a second. Really close stuff there. Seven minutes to go in this half. Nice move with another corner. Armstrong at the end of the box. Shoots! <sighs> nearly a glamorous finish from Armstrong. Maybe he would have finished that in League One. Maybe not now, though. Brown loses the ball to Bartley. Is he going to win it back? Bartley with a decent pack to Milivojevic. Van Aanholt. I presume that's Matty James, anyway. Scott Dan. Back to Pope. Poor ball from Pope to Clark after all that. Lovely ball to Armstrong, though. He shoots. Oh, just wide. He hasn't He hasn't got the knack in the championship, it doesn't seem, at the moment, anyway. And uh, it's worrying times if he goes on a bit of a goal drag. But we have got McAlinden banging in the goals at the moment, so that's brilliant. Brown again to Lowe. Puts it into the box. McAlinden, and he scores again. Honestly... This boy, well, this boy, he, he's older than me, so that's a bit uh, unfair, but this, I've just turned my Xbox on. I'm sorry, I'm just trying, trying to move the camera a little bit, just notice it's a bit out of place. But Liam McAlinden, he scored, was it five in the last episode? He's already scored two today, and I reckon he's got the, well, it's not, it's not called the golden boot, I don't think, in the championship, but something along those lines, if he keeps going as he is, he's going to get the equivalent of the golden boot. Can he get another hat-trick to that? That'd be awesome. But uh, we've been brilliant so far, 2-0. I don't think we'll be able to do it without McLinden. And uh, it banks land on making six interceptions. It's been really good. He has picked up a yellow card, fair enough, but oh well. But it looks like Brown's really tight. So we're going to bring Ben close on. Um, there was a few loans offers for him um, and Adam May. But I was just continuing, obviously. Ad David Myler's new in the club. David Day. It is David Myler, yeah. He's new in the club, so maybe not. Uh, maybe he might get injured. Maybe he should not, might, might not play well. Um, and we've also got Marcus Brown, who's obviously... On loan, so it would kind of defeat the object, wouldn't it, to bring someone in on loan and then loan one of our existing players out? I don't know, I think uh, Klaus and May are quite similar, and quite similar in age. So it be interesting to see which one develops quickest. But it looks like at the moment, we're going to win this match. David Myler picks the yellow card, might have to come off because he seems a bit tired. But could this be the path of his comeback? Fabio puts it into the box, second time round. Thompson gets it out for now. Can we launch a counter-attack? Loam. Runs with the ball, is he going to lose it? He is to Matty James. Milivojevic. Fabio. Through to Calvert-Lewin. Oh, it's gone over the bar. Calvert-Lewin playing in the championship. I wonder if that, that, that's a permanent signing. Uh, no, on loan from Everton. I was about to say, it's a fairly good signing for the championship. Um, considering he's playing Everton's first team in real life at the moment. Yeah, we're going to have to take... Well, we can't take Myler off because we've got the same issue. We never have two, we have never, we never have two midfielders on the bench. That's our problem. Uh, we're going to put Chris Long on for um, Armstrong. He's just played quite poorly, to be honest, today. Um, and that's a real worry. But we're going to bring Watmore on for Clark. Even though Landler's got a yellow card, Clark just seems tired. He's played really well, you know, 7.7. .7. And our defence is doing really well. If we can, can get a clean sheet here, that'd be brilliant. And uh, really do wonders for our goal difference. McAlinden. Oh, there's a free kick for us there. And Scott Danny's off for a two-footed lunge. And this could this be a goal off the aftermath? Close. Not quite. Again, low on the edge of the box. Into the box for McAlinden. It's a hat-trick for Liam McAlinden. Surely we can't call it, call it Liam McAlinden number two, can we? But it's a hat-trick for Liam McAlinden. And I said at the start of last episode, I said, you know, I quite like McAlinden. I'm loving to have a few goals. Well, within the space of about 40 minutes in video time, he's gone from a somebody to, well, a nobody to a somebody. With a hat-trick here. That's brilliant stuff. We're going to take... Uh, no, we can't. We made all our substitutions. Never mind. We're going to have to go. We're going to go on control because there we ten mentions. Surely now we should be able to close out the game um, quite successfully. Wolves have beaten Brentford five 0 so they've been at the hands of two real big defeats this season already of Brentford. And all right, you have put your hands up if you predicted this before the game. I certainly didn't. Um, brilliant stuff. Could it even be four 0 Myler put it into the box. It's another own goal. It's another own goal. We've conceded two own goals. Well, the other teams have conceded two own goals against us this season. And we're beating Crystal Palace 4-0. Myler put it in and Van Aanholt just put it off his leg into the back of the net. And we're doing fantastically at home against teams. We just can't to seem to do it away against teams. And funnily enough, that's the same with my Liverpool save. It's a bit worse in my Liverpool save. We're quite literally losing to all the teams away from home. Um, but that's a worry away from home. Hopefully we can beat Ipswich though in the next one. And 4-0... That should be it. Come on, call time, ref. Lovely ball from Marley too long. And that is the action coming to a close. We're back in the playoffs. And 4-0 is absolutely fantastic. That was brilliant. No one gave us a chance. A clean sheet and four goals. To be honest, can you really expect any more? Liam McLinden has to start for the next game. I'm really hoping he doesn't get an injury. I'm aware he's probably going to have a high injury risk. 
Uh, is he on here? Let's have a look. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Pretty much everyone. Yeah, there we go. Heavy with Liam McAlinder. But there is an international break now. I don't think he's going to be called for Ireland, but I'll let you know if he is. Um, but the next game is against Ipswich Town. So let's see if we can make it two in two today. That'd be very interesting. And if we can, that really helps set for our early season form. Right, the players have had a time to relax. Not really. They've been training quite hard over this period. We've got one injury to talk about, and that's Damien McCrory. He's out for a few days because of blisters, you know, sort of wear and tear sort of things. But as you can see, everyone's on low or medium uh, injury risk, and they're all quite refreshed after the international break, which is quite nice. Uh, McGee's in goal, and there's not really many changes apart from the fact that Long and McLinden start, and Long starts rather than Armstrong, and Wiggins starts rather than McCrory, because obviously McCrory um, has got a little niggle, and I think that is about it in terms of changes. Brett Pittman's on the bench, uh, back again potentially from his injury today, but he can't really play as a centre mid, so we might have to change to a 4 1 3 2 or 4 2 3 1, taking one of the strikers off. Um, to accommodate for that. But at the moment, I'm not going to change the tactic at all um, to facilitate for Pitt Pittman. He's really not that important. And whilst playing well, there is no need to change the tactic, in my opinion. Um, and hopefully, McAlinda can continue his form today. I don't want to keep playing him in every single game because, A, there's a chance of injury, and B, if he stops scoring, then there's questions being asked. But, you know, if the novelty keeps going, then I'm quite happy. But we've got an early chance. Long... Oh, nearly a goal there. Nice, we've got another chance put into McAlinden. Oh, it's off the bar, and he nearly scored an early goal to get make it another one for today's episode, but uh, not quite, not quite yet. Cardiff took an early lead against Fleetwood. Four of our players were in the team of the week um, of the last game. We had McAlinden, Ibanks, Landel, and two other players I can't quite remember. But Thompson puts it into Brown, back to Thompson, to Brown again, to Low, to Long, Low, McAlinden. He scores as McAlinden. Oh, wow. I'm just speechless about it. And, and because of McAlinden, we're only one point off the top of the table in which, well, Ipswich are now down to sixth. But four other teams are now on 14 points and we're on 13. So very close to them. And even if we go through a drought at the end of the season, this is going to be a very nice amount of points. Um, so it's cure our... Well, if we, if we don't stay up now, basically, I'll be very shocked. But as you can see, leading goal scorers in the league and the team with the most goal difference. And we've started tremendously to this season. But this game is not over yet, so... Calm down a bit. They put a ball in, but a Banks Landle gets it out. Low. McAlinden. McAlinden, can he be, be the provider this time? Myler to long. Shoots. Oh, it's off the bar. Unlucky. We could be freeing it up now if there wasn't any bar or post, but then that wouldn't really work. So, oh well. But 21 minutes in here. We're still 1 0 up. Can Ipswich get back into the game? Ebanks Landle gets it out. Tremendous player Ebanks Landle's turned out to be at the moment. I'll probably say that. He'll probably get himself sent off now. Lolly on the edge of the box for them. Put it into Garner. To McGoldrick, and McGoldrick gets one in the back of the net. That's Ipswich with a goal back, but oh, game's not over at the end of the day yet, so I wouldn't sweat too much about it. The Banks Landle doesn't quite get the ball back, but you can't expect him to intercept every single ball. But what I'm saying is, from what I've seen from you so far, I think I'm quite impressed. Anyway, Garner to McGoldrick, and he shoots and scores, but that sort of happens. You can't really expect a clean sheet every day. At the end of the day, we signed a Banks Landle, who was our most expensive sign at £500,000, and I think it's more than worth it, to be honest. Um, he's playing really well so far. Hence why I'm going so far. I feel like we're going to lose here. I feel like we're. Gonna, I feel like it's one of them matches. Garner, Lolly again. Is it going to be die deja vu? Put into the box. McGoldrick, Clark gets it out for now. Nice low. Can we get a game stack going? Low runs down the pitch. Pass. Nice long on the ball. Can it even put it into McAlinden? Headers it. Met shoots. McAlinden gets another goal. I tell you what, it's not scripted. That that's his tenth goal of the season already. That's crazy. That's honestly brilliant. And Captain Goodspeed, if you're watching, I think Liam McAlinden is the new Paul Glatzel. Liam McAlinden and Paul Glatzel are going to go down as the, as the wonder kids of, of FM18. I mean, Adam Armstrong's in there as well, you know, for his burst of form. But if he dries up a bit, then I'll tell you what, Matt McAlinden's just going to replace him. I think McAlinden, I don't know, Joe, leave it down in the comments, but I think McAlinden is doing a little bit better than Glatzel was. Brown, McLinden again. All right, he's got a hat-trick again. <laughs> Two hat-tricks in today's episode. Oh, my God. I'll just put it in perspective again. The player is on £75,000 a year. What else was I going to say? He's back up. Um, and he's already scored 11 goals this season. That's probably more than he scored, scored combined in his competitive career. That's probably a bit of an, an exaggeration. But let's have a look. Um, yeah, he scored 14 in League 2 last year, but still, 14 in League 2, 
and 11 in championship. Quite a big jump from League 2 to the championship. And he's the only reason why we are so far up at the moment. I don't see another reason. The other strikers aren't playing particularly well. But McAlinden, he's just playing out of his skin. Honestly, the lad is fantastic. And it was one that I was umming and ahhing about signing. I was going, oh, I don't know whether to sign him or not. And thank God I did in the end. Um, because I thought, well, we're going to have too many strikers. But we've got four strikers. We've got Chaplin, Armstrong, Long. <laughs> Armstrong and Long. Um, and Chaplin, as well as, obviously, like McAlinden. And Long's doing decently, you know, he's had his decent start, but Armstrong's doing a bit rubbish. Can McAlinden score a fourth? Long, McAlinden. Oh, Ball gets dispossessed, that's his first poor part of the match, but Banks Lendl gets it back. Poor pass from Brown, but luckily, doesn't turn into anything. It's tremendous. Obviously, Long's starting well to the club. Um, I think Bennett probably needs a few more appearances, and now he's been a bit rubbish so far this season, so... I mean, the players will just get rotated, and then we'll find our best eleven. really. The two goalkeepers will be the ones that always keep rotating until we find a real solid goalkeeper. Um, but to be honest, in the Championship, you're always going to concede. So I don't really think it makes too much difference um, who's in the back of the net. But I know Allsop's paid more, so it would make more sense to put him in the back of the net more. But Hughes has a shot there, and it just, got, just gets put over. And um, we're going to take Nags off. He's been quite poor the rest of the season, to be honest. And we'll bring Carl Bennett on for him. Um, and he can play as a winger on support. That's absolutely fine with me. Um, and that's our first substitution of the day. So Carl Bennett comes on, gets a nice clap. Wouldn't it be brilliant to have an instant impact if I can talk? Myler. Poor pass, to be honest, from Myler. And he hasn't done brilliantly since he started. But saying that, you know, in the non-highlight periods, he might be doing well. But his his ratings don't quite suggest anything magical. Thompson to McAlinda. Lovely ball up to Long. It's not going to get it to its target there. Myler. Lovely ball up. Again, not going to get to its target. But Myler perseveres. Myler. Still Myler. Brown. McAlinda. Long in the box. Shocking from Long. That's not good at all. But McAlinden saved us. 9.5 McAlinden's on, and he's going to be the best um, player of the season at the moment. But I really hope it doesn't stop. Because when it does, I'll tell you what we need. We need another hero, or else it's going to get disastrously. But Goldrick shoots and doesn't quite get in the back of the net. Do you think, folks, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but just as a social experiment, if we get promoted, do you think that McAlinden will... Um, Sort of make it to the Premier League with success, if that makes sense. Um, will he adapt, is the right word. Uh, we're going to bring Long off and bring Pittman on after his injury lay off. Uh, and make it a 4 2 3. Well, with McAlinden a sole striker, I think he can do it. I think McAlinden can do it. Um, and I don't think it will hurt our chances too much. We do need to make another substitution. That will be your Banks Lander after his uh, card swap. Thompson and Banks Lander uh, around. I remember a Banks Lander when I went to watch him live. Sure, he's a right back. And I'll tell you what, Love, Thompson and Banks Lander can all play as right back and they can all play as centre back. It's brilliant stuff. Pittman then. Myler again. Brown. Pittman. Brown again. Come on, get it up the pitch a little bit. Thompson. Ball to Myler. I feel like we're going to lose it here for buggering about. Brown in the box to McLinden. Oh, so close. McLinden could have got another one. But today's episode has been brilliant. It's been brilliant today. And Brown, it's brilliant. Wiggins puts it in. Um... Not quite. McAlinden on the edge of the box. I think the trouble is the fans. Well, obviously there aren't. I know fans just think of it. Think of it um, in an in an in another world. I can't think in a digital world. In another world, I don't know. Um, the fans are going to think everything he touches turns to gold. So when he misses a chance, like oh oh, um, and that's the problem. When he when he goes dry in terms of goals, it's going to be a real issue. But Waghorn's got the ball. Hold on, the game's not over yet. Clark. Back to McGee, put it out, that's nice stuff, really love, uh, Lowe should have gone after that. It's a bit of a nightmare having players called Lowe and Love in your squad, it really it really makes a bit of a confusion. But Myler, lovely dispossession there, Pittman up to McAlinda, we're struggling with just one striker, I can tell. And that's going to be a problem with Pittman coming back into the side, he's just going to have to simply come in as a central midfielder. And I'll tell you what, Ipswich have missed a few clear-cut chances today. Wiggins back into the box for Bennett. Brown on the edge of the box. Not really there, is it? They can get one back. Three against one. Waghorn to Ward. It'd be pretty poor if they don't score this. Ward and the number four gets it out. Pittman. Bennett. Yeah, we're doing poorly one strike. The problem is I think we've got one poacher. Um, and simply everyone is trying to almost attack him, if that makes sense. And and uh, challenge him. And it's working, admittedly. Um, but we shouldn't really have to worry about that. It's been quite a boring second half, considering obviously... Um, there's been four goals in that first half, but McAlinden with two hat-tricks today. Can he continue that form on? And we're 
firmly in the playoffs now. Two wins out of today's episode, and we have started quite fantastically. And I think we just got to have to address McLinden again, um, saying, you know, I was impressed. And he looks extremely delighted. Unfortunately, he wasn't called up by Ireland, but I'm sure if he continues like this, then Martin O'Neill's going to um, see a little, as you can see, um, another three goals for him. And already 10 goals in the season. So that is absolutely tremendous. Let's have a look when we'll come back. We'll have to come back for the game against Man City. We'll come back for the game against City. Um, and I think probably the game against Forest. Bear in mind, we haven't played any away games on camera. Apart from that, well, apart from the first episode, ignore me. Um, we haven't played away games for a while. So we'll play against City and then against Nottingham Forest. So if you have enjoyed that, folks, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll be back every day this week. I still have to work out a schedule. I'm struggling a little bit. Um, but every day this week anyway... This series will be on you, on you, with you at 6 p.m. Reminder: There's going to be a live stream tomorrow with Liverpool uh, on the FM18. So the bait savers did. You'll, you'll get it if you watch the stream. But it's at 8 p.m. on the channel on Tuesday. So make sure you subscribe to get notifications as that goes live. And that's on tomorrow after the, tomorrow's episode. So if you are watching this after the Tuesday, you can always go and watch the stream on a replay. But if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. I don't blame you, to be honest. I certainly wouldn't. But anyway, <laughs> I've been T.I. Jeff. Thank you so much for watching. I think McAlinden deserves a thumbs up today. Pretend I'm Liam McAlinden and I deserve a thumbs up, don't I? Anyway, I've been T.I. Jeff. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow once again with another video. Goodbye.